Good morning, it's Graham from Unearthed and I'm going to do another weekly um, chat about detecting or detecting talk as I call it or I've named it. I know there's other detecting talk um, YouTube videos out there I guess but um, this is my own personal slant on things currently and I'm going to continue to do this each week until my material dries up and then I'll probably put a stop to it for a while. Um, so it's it's aimed at giving people a little bit of advice, uh, the current scene as I see it, and of course, of course I've just set this off. Um, this is my third time of doing it, and somebody's ringing me, and the numbers just <laughs> flashed up on the screen. You just can't write the script. I'll just ignore that one. Um, yeah, I, I think there's there's a number of things that I want to discuss, and I'm hoping that I can reach out to people and interact with them. This isn't a live. Um, chat with people i'm not going to be able to do that yet on youtube but i might do that on facebook coming up in the next few weeks so watch out for that if think if people think it's um, a worthwhile thing to do i'll do it first off is a, a subject that is starting to get under my skin a little bit and that subject is green waste or metallic waste as i call it i don't like the word green waste green waste or metallic waste is we're finding it on farmers fields we're finding it on more and more farms now um, throughout the country so for example we've got it all the way up in carlisle it's probably across the borders i've not been detected in scotland for some time so i'm not really sure about the scene there um, but um, green waste is being spread on farmers fields whether it be pasture believe it or not it's even put on pasture fields arable it's in with the crops it's coming from recycling plants now i've got a selection of things that i've dug up over the weekend for you guys to see, I don't know if you can see that, but that's part of uh, this metallic waste that's ending up on the farmer's fields. We find a lot of that sort of stuff, I guess it's off furniture, doors, fitments, that sort of thing. It's aluminium, so that's one part. Pins off plugs, as you can see, loads of them, loads of them. Other fitments, and this is, I mean the sack I took home was pro probably weighed over a kilo. Of this stuff spread all over the place it's just legalized tipping uh, in, or, or under the cover tipping it should be going to landfill or it should be getting recycled not not strewn on farmers fields so for, for, i've been aware of green waste or metallic waste i've got to educate myself to call it metallic waste um for, for five six seven years more maybe but recently it's been turned up on our own permissions and of course it sounds a little bit daft and a little bit selfish of me only to show an interest now because it's affecting me personally and I've, I've probably sat back and not done enough about it but so what I've done so, so now I'm, I'm trying to make people aware of this of this problem I've approached the farmers some farmers say no I'm not aware of it or I am aware of it um, and I don't like it or we had a bonfire on and it spread across the fields and that sort of thing and, and some farmers don't know anything about it some do you know I, I don't know the ins and outs of it all but I know it shouldn't be on there it is definitely coming in with like a, a fertilizer a compost I don't know what they're going to class it as next but it's coming in contractors are bringing it in spreading it on the crops it can't be good for the environment selfishly it's not good for detecting farmers are our friends farmers are supposed to be the guardian of the countryside they are our friends, we are farmers, we can't detect, but there's a bigger picture and that's the contamination of waste going on the farmers fields, it's wrong. So what I've done is recently to keep you guys up to date is, uh, I've contacted the Friends of the Earth and made them aware of it and they were quite concerned. The Green Party, because it's got to be on their agenda, they've got to be interested in it, and the Environment Agency. The Environment Agency were not very helpful, they seemed to be a little bit, well uh, you know, can you prove it sort of thing. Well, I am. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to take a, a film. I'm going to do a film of me digging green waste up on some of these farms. No two ways about it. Uh, and, and that won't be hard to do because I've got it surrounding me at the moment. I've got two fields here of my own. That I own five acres or so, four or five acres. And it's the only field in this area that hasn't got green waste on. Make of that what you will. So it does say, well, it's not going to be hard for me to nip out with a detector and show how much green waste is on, on fields surrounding us. But it's a bigger picture. It's all the way down in Dorset, it's in Norfolk, it's in Lincolnshire, it's in, it's in Chester, it's in the northwest, it's in the northeast. It's all over the place. It's coming in. So we need to be making aware. So what I'm saying to people is, 
Contact the Friends of the Earth and make them aware of it. Contact the Environment Agency and make them aware of it. Contact the Green Party and make them aware of it. There's somebody, a gentleman called Matt Lightfoot uh, from the North West, he's NCMD, I think regional, really good guy, and he's he's on the on, on the case of it as well. Um, he's bringing it up at regional meetings, he's making people aware of it. Uh, so he's doing a really good job, he's Mark, and William Hargreaves as well from the North West, I think he's a Loon Valley guy. He's also very passionate about green waste. He doesn't like it, it's got no place in farmers' fields, and he's also doing reports, I think reports, but he's also doing presentations to groups about green waste. So, you know, if, if these guys can start that process off and grow it, and I know the NCMD nationally have done some good work around um, metallic waste, green waste as well, um, and I think personally that they need to continue that good work, okay? So it's there, it's out there, it's a problem, it's a threat to the hobby, but it's also got a bigger picture because of the environmental uh, impact I guess these fields have, have done very well for thousands of years growing crops in without bits of metal being mixed in with the crops I was finding batteries um, that's in this bag screws aluminium screws everything you name it now it does come out a tarnished colour so to, 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 some, uh, to some people got my tongue tied a bit there to some people it looks like it's Victorian night soil waste whatever they class it as it's not if i put this up on social media all these bits of wind fitments and fragments furniture fittings and things and then people turn around and say oh it's victorian it's not victorian don't insult my intelligence it's gone through a process to make it that color it's coming in it's recent stuff from recycling plants so I'm going to get the Environment Agency to act on this and I won't let it go. I'm like a dog with a bone, if I have to be. Got to do it. Um, so that's the green waste, metallic waste. See how it's going to take me a long time to be educated away from green waste, isn't it? I keep calling it metallic waste. That's a metallic waste uh, info for you guys. So you are just the same as me, detectorists out there, do your bit. Uh, secondly is, uh, something I want to bring up is, uh, and I think this will be quite important for people is in the age of social media uh, and the age of interaction on computers um, Facebook Instagram YouTube I guess all these little outlets people are meeting each other talking online which is good makes the world tick however just a word of warning I would be careful out there guys who you're talking to you don't know these people on the other end of a computer there's people getting invited out on days detecting you know, come down with me for days detecting down in shropshire lincolnshire norfolk anywhere um, and people are going blind they go out and meet these people to detect with them for a day you don't know them you don't know them from adam they could have anything background wise so what i'm trying to say is just be careful who you invite who, who's inviting you out and who you're detecting with. Check them out first. Do your homework on these people to make sure they're 100% genuine. Because you just never know. You know, it's not a sweet, innocent world that we live in, unfortunately. So you've just got to be a little bit aware of who's out there and what goes on. So do your homework, do your checks. By all means, do it. But I wouldn't go blind. You know, there's women detecting now. There's a lot of ladies coming into the hobby. Um, you've just got to be a bit careful. So that's that's that sorted. Um, I hope I hope that helps. Next up is back to social media. Now, for years and years, people have been detecting. I started in the eighties, where we just we were just given a pamphlet with a detector. There was no social media to give you advice. There was no YouTube. There was no Facebook. There was nothing. There was no nothing to give you advice on using a detector other than reading the little paper pamphlet that you were given, get out in the fields and learn it yourself. This day and age, people have got so much information, it's brilliant. The info's, the info's brilliant. You've got loads of it at your disposal. Too much, probably. But what I'm trying to say is this. Learn your detector. Don't listen to all this hype. And There's an old saying, if a machine's good enough, it'll do the talking for itself. 
It doesn't need to be hyped up. If it's a good machine, good detector, then it'll do the business for you in the fields. It doesn't have to be complete, uh, continuously recycled each week on social media how good it is. And tell I told you how good this machine was. Every week it's the same crack. People are not thick. They do the homework themselves, they learn a machine, they do well with it, happy days. You don't need to be constantly reminded on Facebook, on these groups, about how good this machine is and how inferior everything else is. So what grinds my gears is this. We sell metal detectors to guys. We try to give honest opinion on machines. If a, if a certain machine doesn't match their style of detecting or where they detect at, so for example, I wouldn't necessarily put a, a high, highly sensitive, fast, responsive, you know, really quick recovery speed detector out there for people to use on deep pasture. I wouldn't do it. In amongst the iron and unarable land, we would. So it's matching a person's uh, permissions and the way how he detects and where he detects for that particular machine. So we're selling quite a lot of certain types of machines. And what we're finding is people are, you know, they're taking them uh, first steps out, out into the field to learn it. I'm giving them as much advice as I possibly can on how to get the best out of the machine. And some people are doing quite well. Others are taking a little bit of time, which you would expect, because they probably haven't got the history on them particular farms that they're detecting on to find a lot of gear. <coughs> but that'll come within time. But then they're going on rallies, turning up with a new machine, proud as punch on rallies, setting off. Within half an hour, somebody's coming over to him. You don't want to be using that machine, mate. You want one of these. This is the new kid on the block. You know, forgetting that this person's just saved up for six months to buy this particular detector. He's proud of it. It's cost him a few quid. It's all he could afford. And, now I'm, and then somebody's telling him he shouldn't be using it should be using this, which is 400 quid more expensive. And then that guy then disappears. And he goes on for, over to the next guy and says the same thing. We're finding that more and more, and it's annoying. You do your own thing. If you like that detector and it's doing the business for you, keep it. Because what happens is, a seed of doubt goes in your head. And you don't find anything that day, for whatever reason, you haven't walked over it. And then you're driving home, and you're thinking, oh God, I've bought the right detector. Maybe that guy's right. Should have bought one of them. Nothing wrong with that detector that you've bought. It's perfectly fine. Does the business. Does the business just as much as the other one does. Without the whistles and bells. But it's putting that seed of doubt in. And I think these guys out there doing this are driven by dealers. Saying, get my sales figures up. I want to sell more of these. Get out there and do the business. So you'll see, every couple of weeks, this same thing churning over and over. Buy this detector. This is the one to buy. I told you it was the best. But it's the same crack. You said that three months ago. You said it six months ago. You said it four weeks ago, two weeks ago. A good detector doesn't have to be hyped. It does, it does the talking for itself. So it's as simple as that. So that's all I'm going to say on the matter. Um, it's not meant to upset anybody. It's not meant to cause friction. I'm telling you as it is. For my personal, you know, it's my personal opinion. And it's probably right. Whether you like it in the court like it is, it's probably right what I'm saying. <coughs> Lastly, uh, <coughs> I want to make a mention about uh, our, our Facebook group. I'm not going to mention about the token draw because that's dealt with. <coughs> that's going nice and smoothly now. But um, there's two things. Uh, we're going to be doing weekly competitions now leading up to Christmas. Free giveaways just to say thank you to guys for posting your stuff up and interacting on the group. Um, it's growing now. We're going to cap it. We're going to cap the group at 10,000. I don't want it any bigger than 10,000. And the reason is it's hard enough now as it is with 6,500 on it to manage between us and the myself, Melanie, and the admin team. We're doing a great job. But it's taxing on people. As your groups grow bigger, it's attracting more and more different sorts of people in. So we're having to manage the group much quicker now, much more responsive. There's one or two undesirables that are coming in and being disrespectful to people. They're disappearing now. I'm getting rid of them straight away. I'm not even calling them out. They're just getting deleted um, because they're being rude. People are, are working hard in the fields all day on a Sunday or a Saturday. They're coming home. They're posting all the fines up. And somebody says to them, you didn't find all that that day. Scrap. Have you been on eBay? It's that sort of disrespectful thing I don't want on the groups. So we're just going to delete people. We're not even going to call them out anymore. So you imagine having a group of 20,000, 30,000. It'd be a nightmare. So 10,000, it's capped. That's it, straight off. 
But going back to the groups, I've just kicked them the side of this desk, so I do apologise if, if you heard a bang. My size 12 feet, booting everything in sight. Um, going back to this, so we're going to do live, not so much live, but we're going to be doing weekly uh, competitions to give away. Uh, we have some water bottles, camel water bottles that are really good out in the field. You can carry them around with you on your belt or your, your finds pouch. We're going to be giving some of them away and other bits and pieces. So watch out for these competitions. Um, and lastly, a big thanks to, I think we're finished. We are finished, I think. 